Okay, so we're going to be doing a basic gearbox, and in this I'll show you how to make a basic plate as well as like how to mesh gears and make gears work. So I guess the first step is we're going to make a sketch on our right plane, and this is not as parametric as what I would recommend, but I think for the sake of this being a tutorial, I'll just use this as the main origin. So we'll center the origin here and we'll make a bearing hole, so 1.128. And then we'll do a 12 to 64 tooth. So in order to do this, we'll model our gears. So what we'll do is we'll draw a circle representing our big gear, which is our 64 tooth. And we'll model another circle on top with this modeling our 12 tooth. And we'll make these both tangent. So now we need to set the actual diametrical pitches. Oh, like the... We need to actually set our gear. So in order to make the mesh, this is the formula. So what we'll do is we'll do 12 divided by 20 minus 0 0.002. And this is our tooth count divided by 20. And then we subtract it by, actually not minus 0 0.02, my bad. We plus 0 0.002. And then we'll add a little bit so that we space the gears out. And what this does is it allows the gears to not be too close together. And gives them a little bit more breathing room and that makes sure and that allows us to not accidentally grind the gears so we'll do that and then we'll do the same thing so 64 divided by 20 plus 0 0.002 and then that gives us our basic dimensions of our gearbox and then we'll be running our motor on this small gear. So what we'll do is we'll set a center point circle. We'll do another center point circle up here, make it 0 0.196, and then we'll make this one inch. And we'll then do a circular pattern on that circle, and then make our bolt pattern for our Neo, which is the motor that we'll be using. And then you can see these three holes here. I'm gonna make this one construction because there's a gear in the way and yeah. After that, we'll do another center point circle like this and we'll make this also a construction line. And we'll make the 60 millimeters to represent the profile of the Neo. So once we have our gear, and the profile of the Neo and some of the mounting holes. We want to add some standoffs just to support the whole thing. And the way we're going to be doing this is we can do a center point rectangle like this and make this equal. And then that makes like a nice square. And we'll add our standoff hole here here, here, and here, and we'll make them all equal. And we'll also make the 0 0.196, so we'll just equal like that. Uh, 0 0.196 is the basically the close fit hole of a 1032 bolt, which is super, super nice. And that's basically what you'll standardize for everything in FRC. Uh, so after this, what we want to do is we want to model our standoff. Or like yeah so we'll actually model a circle here and we'll do it we'll make this a construction line and then we'll make a line that's going actually I wonder if I can can I tangent this no, I cannot tangent like that we'll do that and then we'll make some arcs on all the other corners so, and then make all the arcs equal to that circle that I made over there. Afterwards, we'll connect using tangent circles like this. Well, I mean tangent lines to the various arcs. So we'll just connect them like that. And we'll make them all tangent. And as you see, as we expand it and decrease it, it'll change the size and it generally works. So I'll make this align tangent to the outside profile of the gear. 
and I'll actually add like a 16th as well to encase the whole thing. And I'll add another arc like this. Once we do that, we'll connect our lines to the profile of the motor and tangent everything and add our final arc for our motor. And that makes our plate. So after this, we'll disable imprinting, press the check mark, and we'll just extrude this. Make this a quarter inch, and yeah, that's kind of it. So actually, my bad, no, it is not kind of it. Uh, one last thing I forgot to do. Uh, we need to add the thing for our motor, like the hold for our motor, and that's a 0 0.75 hole. And we can just stick that like that. And there you go, it's actually, now it's actually done. Uh, I'll change the appearance here to like gray and I'll change the material to aluminum. And it's a good practice to just make sure you change your materials and your color as you go because it makes it a little bit easier to like, because at some point you'll have to set your materials anyway. Afterwards, we'll use the spacer feature script here and we can just make a... Actually, this sounds kind of an... Actually, no. No internal adder. We'll make the external diameter 3 8 like this, and then we'll make the 0 0.5 for the gear. And that's kind of it for our spacer. And this just spaces the plates in between for our gearbox. And we'll also change the color of this to green. Next, we'll make another sketch like this. And then in this sketch, we'll just basically just do the same thing. But we'll have to make sure we account for the motor. So we'll use the use tool here in order to use these specific holes like that. And then we have used these holes and now we can just make the rest of the gearbox. So we'll do the same thing as I did previously, which is we'll take all the corners of the holes that we want to use and we'll make some circles like this and oh not circles arcs my bad and then after we make all the arcs we will connect them all with lines as shown but actually for this one i want to leave a little bit of space for the actual for the pulley for the pinion so we'll do something like this tangent everything together and then make this equal to the profile of that sp spacer and then for this side i'll just constrain it as so and then we just have this thing uh what i'll do is i'll just dimension it to the edge of that circle and we have another plate we'll disable imprinting and then extrude it but then so usually when you extrude and it's connected to something like this it'll automatically try to add it so you want to make sure that whenever you're adding and it seems like it's changed it's also being this color this is going to try to be one piece you don't want that so make sure you press the new uh, new feature in our extrude tab afterwards edit the appearance uh, change the color, change material, 6061, as so, and we have our plate. Next, you want to add our shaft, so we'll use the shaft generator feature script here, and I personally prefer using bolt and washer, so we'll do that, and we'll use the up to face feature. So we'll set the origin here, we'll set the end face We'll set the origin to this side of the plate and the end face to this side of the plate as so and i'll repeat that one more time so origin end face and we'll set our shaft type as rev rounded hex which is a rounded hex with a 13.75 
like rounded and that allows you to put it into like circular shafts i mean, circular bearings my bad uh after this we'll offset each of the ends by 1 16th as so and then change the direction and this basically allows us to fit our bearings on because the bearings are extruded out by 1 16th and we'll also change the appearance here and that's basically it so once we do that we can insert it into our assembly so we'll just insert it as so make sure that we stay inside of our current of our insert menu and press the check mark and we can fix the we can fix this plate like as so uh the next thing we can do is we can use the fasten mate here and we'll fasten the edge of this to the hole specifically like that and you don't want to accidentally select the like the center point of the arc because you can't replicate it and we'll use the replicate tool here to match individual edges and go like this we can then fasten this plate to this spacer and we have the general beginning of our gearbox Next, we want to insert a Neo, so we'll insert our Neo 1.1 here. And how long is this tutorial gone? 11 minutes. I'll try to I'll try to finish by 15. Uh, just do something like this. Import the Neo, rotate it, bam. 12 tooth. After this, we want to get our 12 tooth gear, so we'll do like a. 12 tooth 20 dp aluminum sim gear just adds up uh sim pinion just adds up basically neos use the same pinion as sims effectively so you can just use the sim stuff and it'll like work out so you just stick it like that after that we get a 64 tooth gear back to the mk cad and we can just import one and i'll just use the pocketed one from west coast products So we still have this shaft that's actually not constrained, so we need other bearings, right? So bearings, back to the MKCAD app. We'll be using a, th a Thunder Hex bearing here. And I am not an advocate for VEX products, but Thunder Hex is also a form of rounded hex. So you can find rounded hex bearings basically on Thrifty Bot or Rev. Those are both pretty good. West Coast Products also sells rounded hex bearings. But Support Thrifty Bot. Thrifty Bot is very good. Uh, here you go. So we've fastened our bearings to our plate. And we just need to put our shaft in here. And that's our basic gearbox without fasteners. The next thing that we need to do is we do need to add fasteners. So we'll quickly measure how much we need. So it's one inch, so we can do like a 1.25. Thing. So we'll go to insert again, but this time we'll go to standard content and we'll do NC inch, bolt and screws, socket head, socket head cap, cap screws, and we'll change the length to 1.25 and we can just insert this as so. And we can, yeah, we can just do that. And then assuming on shape has decided to be nice to us, so if we do it, did it correctly, we should be able to use the replicate tool and replicate all these bolts. Once we do that, we can go back to MKCAD and we can grab a 1032 nylon insert nut, lock nut here. And we can fasten mate this once again. We're going to shift, hold shift, click the center of this. And then instead of holding shift, you'll just select the circle like that. And once again, we can just replicate. And this one, we can just select all the edges on the face. And bam, you're done with that. Afterwards, we, we add our bolt and washer. So actually, I wonder if we can get shaft retention screws. Yeah, shaft end screws. So we can just get the rev shaft end screws. Uh, West Coast Products also sells West, uh, shaft end screws. And the West Coast Products one, from my experience, were better. But they're base But if rev did fix theirs, they're basically the same. Uh, same idea, just throw them on the end of the shaft to uh, secure it 
you can get a drill tap and tap the ends of shafts really quickly. And if it's a the flip. Okay, I have no clue what I did. Anyway, we'll just copy paste it. But yeah, you can just tap the ends of the shafts and that way if you use the shaft retention screws, that makes life really easy. The one thing is these are really expensive. So an alternative is we can just run a bolt-on washer setup. So if we go back here, we can get a washer. Like a ten number 10 washer like this. And then we get a bolt and screw, socket head, make it like 0.5. And we can also retain our retain our gearbox using a uh, bolt and washer setup like this. And while we're, while we're also at it, we'll throw some bolts and screws here. Uh, and yeah, that's the entire gearbox. We'll shift P and hide everything, but that's kind of it. That's all the basics that you probably need to know, and that should help you out with making your gears, plates, and whatever.